Hey guys, today we're going to be going over congruent triangles. Um, and it's the first time we've ever taken notes in a notebook, so I just want to make sure you all understand how to do it. So in your notebook, each new topic needs to start on a new page at the top of the page. It will make it easier for you to find the new topic whenever you need to look at it, and it'll make it easier for me to grade the new topic. So this is going to be unit four, part two. And today we are covering, oh no, um, today we are covering congruent triangles. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go over what a congruent triangle is. So a congruent triangle are triangles with the same size and shape. This means that all corresponding parts which are the angles and sides are congruent. Um, then with congruent triangles, sometimes we have to write congruency statements. So and, uh, you need a congruency statement when triangles are congruent. We can write a... congruency statement. All right, and that looks like this. If you have two triangles, let's say A, B, C. And yes, you need to put these markings. One, two, three, A, B, C. And let's say we have D, E, F. Uh, all right, so these are my congruent triangles. So triangle ABC, this is my congruency statement, is congruent to triangle DEF. But the reason why we can say um, A, A, and D have to be together because they're the ones with the one arc. B and E have to be together because they're the ones with the two arcs. And C and F have to go together because they're the ones with the three arcs. All right, a valid congruency statement must match all corresponding angles and sides. So that's what I just showed you with the highlighting. Then we have CPCTC, which is just all the letters for corresponding parts. Of congruent. Triangles. Are congruent. So those are all the first letters of everything except for of and are. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. And all that that says is if we know two triangles are congruent, then we know every pair of their sides and angles are also congruent.
All right, so let's do some examples. So um, we have triangle JKL is congruent to triangle PQR. And we need to come up with all of the different angle pairs. So that's pretty easy. Oops, come back. Um, the angles are just single letters. So angle J and angle P are congruent. And then angle K and angle Q are congruent. And then lastly, angle L and angle R are congruent. Sides are done the same way. Um, JK are the first two letters. Go with PQ, which are the first two letters. So JK and PQ. The last two letters are KL, and the last two letters are QR. And then the first and last letter, so JL goes with PR. And then we can always come up with another completely different congruency statement which just means that we aren't going to name the first triangle JKL, we're going to change the order. So let's do KLJ. K is pink, which goes with Q. L is green, which goes with R. And J is yellow, which goes with P. So you do have to change the order of the second one if you change the order of the first one. Another example is if you have these triangles... K, P, M, and then this one, C, Y, A, and it tells you triangle K, P, M is congruent to triangle A, Y, C. Then it wants you to find a bunch of things. So we need to find K, M. What's congruent with K, M? Well, K, M is the first and last two letters. So it's my first and last true letters, which is A, C. Then you're supposed to find C, Y. Well, C, Y are my last two letters, so my last two letters are M, P. And yes, you have to say M, P. You cannot say P, M. They have to be in the same order. Then we have P, K, which is congruent to P, K are my first two letters, 2, Y, A. Then we have angle Y, which is congruent to, Y is my middle letter, angle P. Angle K, which is congruent to my first letter, which is A. And then angle ACY is congruent to, angle A is my first letter, so angle K. C is my last letter, so M. And then Y is my middle letter, so P. <clears throat> and then we do triangle MPK is congruent to, so M is my last letter, so C. P is my middle letter, so Y. And M, oh sorry, K is my first letter, so A. And then if we changed it to triangle YAC, that would be congruent to Y is my middle letter, so P. A is my first letter, so K. And then C is my last letter, so M. All right, so that's if they give you congruencies in the middle, but if they give you equalses, those are done a little bit differently. So our next example is triangle STW is congruent to triangle BFN. So we have a triangle WST, and this is 17 centimeters. 
This is nine centimeters, and this is 67 centi uh, inches, uh, degrees, sorry. Try that again. F B N is 82 degrees, and this is 14 centimeters. All right, so this is what the problem would give you, and then it asks you a bunch of stuff. But before we do a bunch of stuff, we can actually go ahead and fill in the missing pieces. So nine centimeters is at SW. SW is my first and last letter, so BN should also be nine centimeters. And then 17, 17 centimeters is at TS. TS are my first two letters, so BF should also be 17 centimeters. And then of course my third side should be 14 centimeters because these are congruent, they should be the same. Angle S is 67 degrees, my first letter, so angle B is also 67 degrees. Angle N is 82 degrees, so so is angle F. And then my last angle, my third angle, I can find by subtracting from 180. So 180 minus 82 minus 67. And that would be 31. So that's what these other ones are. All right. So now whenever we get asked questions, we'll know all the answers. So wants to know GJ, which is, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong number, BN, which is 9 centimeters. So anytime you have equals, they want numbers. Anytime that you have congruences, they want letters. Uh, TW is 14 centimeters. BF is 17 centimeters. Um, angle W is 82 degrees. Angle Z is... Oh, B, sorry. I keep looking at the other problem. B is 67 degrees. And then F, which is 31 degrees. And that's how you do a problem like that. Um, the last one, I guess there's two other kinds. So if we have UVW is congruent to triangle, triangle TSR, and then we have UWV 12X minus 7, 57, 3Z plus 14, TR. S 53, 5Y minus 33, and 50. Okay, <clears throat> so this tells you UV. UV are my first two letters, so my first two letters go with TS. So those two go together. And then VW. VW are my last two letters. They go with SR. And then U, W, U, W are my first and last letters. Go with T, R. All right, so we can set those equal to each other and solve. 12X minus 7 is equal to 53. Add 7 to both sides. 12X is equal to 60. Divide by 12. And X is 5. My Y's are 5. Y minus 33 is equal to 57. Add 33 to both sides. 5Y is equal to 7, 8, 9, 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 90. Divide both sides by 5. And y is, we're going to 48 times, 18. And then the last one, which is the z, 3z plus 14 is equal to 50. 
subtract 14 from both sides. 3z is equal to 50, 40, 36. Divide by 3. And z is 12. Then there is one other last type of example problem, and that's if they don't give you a picture at all. So we have triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL, and then it tells you DE is 18, EF is 23, DF is 9X minus 23, JL is 7X minus 11, and JK is equal to 3Y minus 21. All right, so let's deal with the variables. So it tells you DF is 9X minus 23. DF is my first and last letter, which goes with JL. So it goes with JL, this one. And then it tells you JK. So JK are my first two letters, it goes with DE. So those two go together, and they gave you 23 to just throw you off. So we have 9x minus 23 is equal to 7x minus 11. Put all your x's on the same side. So 2x minus 23, these cancel, negative 11. Add 23, these cancel, 2x is equal to... 12, then divide by 2, and x is 6. And then for my pink one, add 21 to both sides. 3y is equal to 39, divide by 3, and y is 13. And we are done with notes.